It is exciting. It's always exciting. Um, Friday night footy, MCG against any opposition, but um, you know, we know they draw a big crowd. Um, it, look, it, to be honest, it can be a challenge for Geelong people to get up the highway um, on a Friday night. So we're really hopeful that they feel we're building some momentum in our season and there'll be a little bit of an extra effort to, to get up to the G to counteract the Collingwood Army somewhat. But yeah, we accept that, that that's a challenge. Um, but, but yeah, we're aiming to put on a good show. We, th we think we're coming into some good form. Obviously still quite a bit to improve on, but um, picking the teams challenging at the moment. You know, we've got some, you know, in the old school language, we've got some good problems at the moment. Their forward line, not exactly full strength at the moment. Does that allow your backs to play a bit more of an aggressive style of footy? Or? No, I think on the contrary, sometimes um, when the opposition forward line is harder to predict, that can make planning, well, it certainly makes planning more difficult, more uncertain, whether it's it ends up being easier or harder is, is difficult to predict, but one would assume that they're going to go a little bit smaller than normal, probably not not by design, and they're looking forward to getting McStay back, and my check's obviously a big loss, Cox is still out, looks to us like Jamie Ellett will come back after not playing for a long time, um, he's obviously a really dynamic player, and again, it's, it's, it's a risk thinking about their forwards in terms of their height, um, Guys like Bobby Hill and Jamie Elliott in particular, Ash Johnson, if he comes in, they, they can play above their height without any problems at all. So if anything, it kind of steals us a little bit more to make sure we get the attention to detail right. You mentioned the Arvins football. I think earlier in the season you said when you were kind of like 7-0 that you weren't really flying and that next time perhaps we'll be as bad as um, what we saw in the same. How would you kind of characterise, I guess, the last you know, two or three weeks? Yeah, I think I'm going to focus on the last two weeks because the third week in that chain wasn't as good against a, a really good team. But yeah, we feel like we've played a little bit more the way um, you know that we aspire to, um, and it's difficult. You know, the opposition always make things difficult for you. That, that's the idea. There's no more than ever. I don't think there are many great secrets around the competition. You, you know, you sort of. No, I don't even see huge differences in the way teams are trying to play. Obviously, teams um, have slightly different priorities and, and slightly different personnel, which sort of shapes the way you play. But um, I think I said after last week's game, it's naive to think that in today's footy you just roll out your style and be good enough to win. I think that's um, got a tinge of arrogance to it. I think you've always got to be thinking how you can improve your game and how you've got to adjust to the opposition. And um, you know, Collingwood are a good example of that because they will, um, and have always, I think, against us, sort of prioritise their pressure around the ball. And I think they'll be thinking, we've got to really up our pressure. Essendon marked the ball a lot on them last week. You know, from what I can tell, they've been quite um, up front, but that's not the way they, they want to be played against. Um, so, yeah, I think it's an intriguing game. It's, as I said, their um, personnel will be a little bit different. Um, and we've got to adjust, but I think to answer your question specifically, and I think you summed it up pretty well, you're probably using my words, that's why I like it, but I didn't think we were going as well as we thought or as well as the world thought when we were 7-0 and, and not as not as bad when we had that patch where we lost the ga a lot of games through the middle of the season, but just feel like, I feel like the last two weeks is probably the second half of the Essendon game and last week, um, aside from some execution, is, is probably as good as we've felt about our game all year. So many teams sitting around that middle market, just outside the eight, including Collingwood. How, how does it feel from the coach's perspective? How close is the way it feels? Oh, it's terrible. It's just, it's, it's stressful. Um, uh, it's, but it does steal you. Like, you know, the, the, in the moment, the stress doesn't feel that good. You look around, if you look too far ahead, um, you know, for, the, for those who are having a crack at their ladder predictor this far out, my advice is don't do it. It's just, it, it messes with your head. Um, it's so hard to predict anyway, um, and we know things will change. But I think in terms of the competition, it's a great thing, isn't it? And 
you know, I, I've, I think, given my thoughts previously in terms of how the competition is set up, but no one can argue that in terms of the watchability um, and probably the, for the good of the game, and even competition is a good one. Um, and I think most people want to go to the footy, you know, having a lack of certainty over who's going to win. And, um, and even to me, St Kilda beating the Swans at Marvel wasn't the boil over that um, some people make it out to be. I, I don't even think John Longmire would say that. Uh, maybe especially John Longmire wouldn't say it. Um, so it's, it's stressful for us. Um, and even the ladder, I wouldn't pay too much attention to the ladder even now. I just think it's, um, there's, a, there's a few teams that probably can't make it, but the rest are going to be very hard to beat. And maybe some of those teams who can't make it are going to be even more dangerous because of that fact. Seems like a weekly question, Tom, as a gym coach, since you got up against Nick Dacos. Just before you mentioned there's no secrets in footy anymore, not many secrets. Mm. Do you give him attention this week? What do you do? Yeah, but I think he's a bit like Tom Stewart. That this, this idea that um, that teams either give them attention or they don't, I think is a little misleading. I think, I, I, as I said, the, the quality around the competition, the consistency, uh, even, even if you think of the, the, the quality of the, the coaches around the place that have moved, even the teams that are struggling a little bit win-loss. I mean, one team down the bottom of the ladder has probably got the best coach of a generation. So there's quality everywhere. Like, it's a bit disrespectful to them to say, oh, because Tom Stewart played well, you just didn't pay any attention. No, the plan just didn't work. Everyone has a plan. And we'll have a plan for Nick. Collingwood will have a plan for Tom Stewart. Um, it changes a little bit week to week based on your personnel and your form. Um, you know, even Zach Merritt, I'm sure they had a plan for Zach Merritt. He still played pretty well. Dacos got the ball a bit last week. So there are different ways to think about it. Um, but. Yeah, I prefer he wasn't in the team. We wouldn't have to waste five hours um, going through all the what ifs with him. You mentioned, I guess, um, having to make adjustments each week. Then, um, I think in the past couple of weeks, probably got a bit of praise in terms of the subs and decisions you've made um, with players, whether that's Tom Stewart um, going to the midfield, Sam Kearney, just how you've used different players. Are those, um, I guess, those couple of players as well? Is that something you continue with? And can you, I guess, take us into just that decision making when? Things aren't going wrong to make those decisions. Sometimes they pay off and sometimes they don't, and obviously they have in your case. Yes, yeah, so, and, and look, sometimes you make those calls and seemingly they don't pay off in the short term, but we don't go to great lengths to explain the investment that we're making for the longer term. I think we did a little bit with Sam DeConey, um, and it, it suited us to do that. At other times, we're a bit more circumspect, maybe more circumspect than some other coaching groups around the competition, but that's just our way. Um, yeah, maybe to give you a little bit of an insight, but, um, and I'll speak for myself, not the other um, coaches in our group, but. I've never, and I hope I'm never the type of coach that sits there by myself and decides this is what we're going to do, you know, come hell or high water. It is, negotiation is not the right word, it's a collaboration. Um, and the most important person in that collaboration is the player himself. Um, so we made that shift with Tom Stewart, for example. I've got no interest in forcing a round peg into a square hole. Um, Tom had to be um, bought into the idea um, and really in the execution of it and even in the in the planning of it sort of he was the central one and I was the um, support act there so that, that's kind of the way we think about it it's not sometimes I think the coaching group and it probably happens at other clubs I'm sure it happens at other clubs you come up with what you think is a great plan um, and if the players push back on it then you've got a conundrum um, and then some coaches would say well I'm the coach and this is what we're going to do just get with the program we're a little bit more of the of the um, of the mind that we'd rather go with a slightly um, inferior plan that that the players want to go with because after all they're the ones that have got to do it and they're the ones that have got to think through it when the plan goes slightly awry which it always does that that's AFL footy. So just to clarify, you you approach Tom, or you and the coaching staff approach Tom to move into the midfield. Well, you might remember about 12 months ago, he played a little bit midfield. So this is not something where we're like, we, we need to have a crisis meeting and, and change the plan. This is something that's been evolving over a long period of time. I, I, the point that I'm trying to be specific with is that 
Tom should take the credit for the, sort of the evolution of that plan and, and the execution. Chris, will the commission ever come straight back in? I know it's probably a weird way to say because you're going back for one game, but is, do you expect him to be in your 23, 6 o'clock tonight? Oh, it's a really hard one, um, Tom. So you know, just as a quick reminder, we picked Mitch Nevitt in our 22 last week and he woke up ill and couldn't play. So logic would tell you that he's recovered and he trained really well that he comes straight back in, but it's just not, not as simple as that uh, for us right at the moment. So we're, we're genuinely, even though it's whatever it is, 24 hours plus, out from the game, we've still got a few balls in the air that we need to, to work through. So I wouldn't like to give you an indication before we've had our final meeting with our coaches. But if it, look, put it this way, if Mitch didn't play, he'd be stiff. Joining selection dots can be futile sometimes. But yep. You held Jed Views out of the VFL last week. He was part of your AFL squad. It was only a five-day turnaround from VFL to AFL this week. To yep. into that. But, and with Elliot playing, that he's uh, a chance for tomorrow night. Yeah, you're right. You, you, it's, <clears> it's, um, it's dangerous to read too much into it. Um, but you're on the right track. and, and then, um, sometimes, I, I think I, I would just answer no, don't read too much into it, but um, you seem to have read into it the right way. So we, we held... Busey was very close to playing last week, um, and with the five-day break, we held him back with, a, with the probability that he would come into our 22 this week. But as I said, we're still working through a few things, but um, he's a bit like Mitch. If he doesn't play, he's perilously close. Is there anybody else that just, I think... Yes, but I'm I'm wary of bringing them up, just just because um, in this forum I can't explain it well enough with enough detail um, without misleading people potentially or giving other people false hope. But we've had um, you know, some good performances in the VFL. I'm happy to speak about the ones we've already mentioned. I, I think I said I'm going to guess it was sort of four weeks into the season that. Jed Buse wasn't in the team, but he would definitely come in. And time's running out a little bit. I still maintain that he will definitely come in at some point, but I'm starting to get a little bit more worried about it because he's just been first class in his um, approach to, to this year in, in difficult circumstances, and he's playing well enough to play AFL footy at the moment. So I'm hopeful for him. And I think Lawson and Sean are examples of um, what I was trying to explain post-game last week around keeping an open mind, which is... Um, we, we, we've never been that type of team that's like, let's just get to our best 22 and leave it there. Like, we believe in cohesion, but y you can't be so close-minded and so committed to cohesion that you don't have a look at what someone a bit different like Lawson in our back half and, and Sean in our front half could do for us. So they took their chances and, and they will keep playing, um, but it's not a lock forever. We've, we've got very few players that are a complete lock. There's going to be one coming, I suspect, this week. I can't give it now, but I think it's getting closer. It's a bit of a complicated one, which is why it's taken so long. Just in terms of um, September, if you are there on grand final, there's talk of Katy Perry being the entertainment. Is there a song that you think would get your groove on and about? Do you know much about Katy Perry? I don't know much about her. I know a lot about Taylor Swift now, um, having an 11-year-old daughter. Uh, are they still enemies? I don't know. I'll go home. I would, no doubt about that. I'll go and talk to Layla and see if I'm allowed to be on Katie's side because I don't want to say the wrong thing. That will really get me in trouble. <laughs>